from time to time, and I probably say this a lot more than I realize, but from time to time, I will say that this is not an agenda-driven channel. Do we have a strong disdain for social justice warriors? Of course. I mean, who doesn't? But I'm also fair to SJW, sometimes to my own detriment. Some in my audience, they don't like hearing me give credit or praise to LeBron James or, in very rare instances, Jamel Hill or someone like Stephen A. Smith. But if they do or say something that I agree with, I'll give them credit for it. Every day on here, I try to be objective. Does that mean I'm always objective? No. But for the most part, I think we do a pretty good job giving everybody a fair shake. We don't just follow the party line, so to speak. Now, I bring all this up because it's interesting how the mainstream media is covering ratings for the Daytona 500. It's not surprising, but it's interesting. Headline at Yahoo Sports. Daytona 500 TV audience down slightly from last regularly scheduled race from 2019. Obviously, that headline has a negative slant to it. Let's compare it to OutKick. Headline at OutKick. Daytona 500 smashes NBA All-Star ratings. Two different articles, two separate media outlets, both looking at the same numbers and pushing two completely different perspectives. So which one is right? Well, technically, they're both right, but they're also both wrong because neither site gives you the full story. OutKick provides information that paints NASCAR in a positive light. Yahoo provides information that gives you a negative slant. This is an example of what I'm talking about when I tell you guys that the media is agenda-driven. It is tough to find actual journalism today. It's tough to find media outlets that will give you the full story. Now, I think I've showed you guys before a screenshot on how many different sources that I will pull from just to make one video. Sometimes I will have 10, 15 windows open across two or three web browsers. I pull all the information I can get, left-leaning sites, right-leaning sites, sites with no political slant, decide which information I think is relevant, and try to give you guys the entire story and then let you decide. Outkick is right. The Daytona 500 destroyed both the Olympics and the NBA All-Star Game. NASCAR beat the closing ceremonies for the Olympics by 35%. They beat the All-Star Game by over 41%. Nearly 9 million people tuned into the Daytona 500 on Sunday. Now, as some media outlets are reporting, this does represent a three-year high for NASCAR. But... The last two years were plagued by rain delays. If I'm not mistaken, I think the race last year, the Daytona 500, I think they had to finish it on Monday. Now, even though ratings for the Winter Olympics were disastrous, NASCAR beating the shit out of them in the ratings, I'll admit, that's impressive. I mean, that just it just should not happen. NASCAR should not be beating the Olympics. Beating the NBA All-Star Game, far less impressive. As we discussed yesterday, the NBA is in the shitter. I had someone comment on that video yesterday on NBA ratings. YouTube had recommended to him the 2001 All-Star Game. They put it in his feed. So he went back and watched some of it. His comment actually stoked my curiosity. So I went and checked out the 2001 game too. I didn't sit there and watch all of it, but I watched it for a few minutes. I encourage you to go check it out. Notice the difference between the quality of play in 2001 to the quality of play that we saw Sunday night. It's not even close. I'm not going to say NBA players back in 2001 played the All-Star game like it was game one of the NBA Finals, but at least they played defense. Final score of that game, 111 to 110. Hell, that's a low final score for an NBA regular season game today. Final score of the All-Star Game this year, 163 to 160. Over 300 fucking points in an NBA basketball game. We didn't see any actual effort until the final three minutes, which is par for the course in the regular season for the modern NBA. Now, I'm not trying to rain on the NASCAR parade here. They are celebrating the fact that the Daytona 500 finally popped a decent rating after two consecutive years of setting record lows. But... There are some serious concerns with this number. I'm not a fan of NASCAR. 
I could give a shit less if they succeed or cease to exist. I think NASCAR is incredibly boring. Bobby Burek over at OutKick, he closed his article on NASCAR ratings by saying he too chooses NASCAR over LeBron James. I'm not going to take it that far. I don't like LeBron in the NBA being in bed with China, but if you're going to give me the option to watch grown men drive cars in a circle for three, four, five hours or watch the NBA, I am choosing the NBA every single time. And it's not like NASCAR is any better than the NBA politically. They're not fucking Xi Jinping like Adam Silver is, but NASCAR still does their best to be accepted by the identifier community. They still kiss the ass of social justice warriors. Of all the sports we have in this country, well, let me correct myself. NASCAR is not a sport. It's more akin to WWE. Hell, the WWE is more athletic than NASCAR. There is nothing athletic about sitting in a car, moving the steering wheel to the left. All of us do that every day. But of all the leagues we have in this country, NASCAR by far has the most conservative fan base. This is where the fuck Joe Biden chant originated. That chant organically changed to Let's Go Brandon. They had a multi-million dollar idea that was developed by their own fan base. They had a young driver associated with it, someone that the marketing department could promote. Brandon Brown? He could have been the new face of NASCAR, the next Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt. All he needed was the support of the organization. NASCAR is a lot like the WWE or the NBA. They have to have stars to generate ratings. Casual fans, they're not going to spend a Sunday afternoon watching drivers they know nothing about. They have no attachment to them, no emotional attachment, I should say, to them. Here you have Brandon Brown. Someone your conservative fan base could get behind. They could have made millions off of merch. This kid could have been the biggest star in NASCAR in decades. What did they do with this idea? NASCAR President Steve Phelps stomps it into the fucking ground. He killed it. We at NASCAR want no association with politics. Please keep politics out of our league. Full fucking shit. Where was that same energy when Bubba Wallace tried to paint himself as the victim of racism? Even after that story was proven false, NASCAR still tried to run with it. ESPN produced an hour-long documentary based on a lie. I didn't hear Steve Phelps crying politics then. No, 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 no. They were milking Bubba Wallace for all it was worth. They were trying to make him the biggest star in NASCAR. To the surprise of no one except Steve Belts and ESPN, the plan backfired. Who would have thought NASCAR fans, of all people, wouldn't get behind some woke bullshit? Have you seen the people that attend NASCAR races? Do they look like the type of people that take kindly to being accused of racism? I briefly mentioned this yesterday, but there is a serious problem with these ratings for the Daytona 500. In the key 18 to 49 demo, of the nearly 9 million viewers, less than 2 million fell into the 18 to 49 demo. That is a major problem. The NBA All-Star Game was watched by 3, 4 million people less than the Daytona 500. Yet they destroyed NASCAR in the key demo by almost a million people. Right now, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it impacts ad revenue, but it's not a big deal now. But if this goes unaddressed, five, maybe 10 years from now, NASCAR is going to have a major problem. They have an aging fan base with no younger viewers to replace them. The WWE, they're experiencing this problem right now, half of the past few years. In the late 90s, when I was growing up watching wrestling, the average WWE fan was 28 years old, which made sense. Back then, the product was geared towards high school, college kids. You fast forward to today, average WWE fan, 54, which is baffling when you think about it. The WWE product today is geared towards young, young children. I don't understand how grown men, grown women, I don't understand how they watch it, but they do. Well, a small portion of them do anyway. Vince McMahon went from averaging five, six, seven million viewers on Monday night to about a million and a half. 
what has happened, the hardcore WWE fan has grown up and continue to watch, but they don't have the younger demographic to replace them. It's the same thing in NASCAR. They have a group of hardcore aging fans that have been watching since the 90s or the 2000s when NASCAR was at its peak. What happens when those fans die? I'm not sure if Steve Phelps knows this, but older people, they tend to die at a higher rate than younger people. Like I said a second ago, they had the perfect guy to attract a younger audience, at least an audience in their 30s, Brandon Brown and they completely fuck it up. All right, let me know what you guys think. Give me your thoughts on the media's coverage of NASCAR ratings and the ratings themselves. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.